Hey, it's Will with Sonda Creative. Today we're going to draw influence from the pop and street art movements to create some cool vector portraits in Photoshop. When doing this technique, it's best to have a large image as we want to be able to capture as much detail as possible. Also, if your image has a complicated background, I'd recommend cutting your subject out of it as it's most likely not going to work with what we're going for here. It doesn't have to be too refined though, just use your pen tool or your polygonal lasso tool to do it. To start, hit Command or Control Shift U to desaturate our subject. Now go down here and select Solid Color. The color can be whatever you want for now, but it'll be easier to choose something in the mid ranges like this. Now set the blending mode to Hard Mix and because of that, you'll see that our color range has been limited to only four values. Those four values are going to be black, a dark color, a light color, and white. Now even if you go back and change your solid color, so long as you don't go too far into any of the corners, you'll always have a variation of those four. And now that you've got a nice array of colors to work with, it's time to get rid of them all with a black and white layer. Now pull up the properties of the layer and you'll see that by default all of these colors are set to either 40 or 60, except for this pesky little blue that's sitting at 20. We don't want that, so go ahead and crank that guy up to 40. Oh, also, magenta is doing its own thing, but in my experience it doesn't really matter. Go back down to adjustments and add one of my favorite tools, a gradient map, on top of everything. This is the part where we take advantage of our four values. Two of them are of course black and white, but now we're going to add in our other two. Make the first one by clicking the bottom of the gradient bar and set its location to 40 and pick a color you like. Next make another color, this time at 60, and pick a color that complements the other one. The reason we're choosing specifically 40 and 60 is so that the colors match up with our adjustment layers we made earlier. Now the colors we choose will always line up exactly how we want them. Now let's actually give it that cutout look that we were going for by going to Filter, Stylize, Oil Paint. Set the stylization to about 4, the cleanliness to 5, and the others can go to 10. Hit OK, and to wrap up we're going to make it really pop by going to Image, Adjustments, Shadows, and Highlights. Like pretty much always, this part is going to come down to your personal preference. I want it to look a little bit moody, so in Shadows I'm setting the amount to 14, the tone to 39, and the radius to 83. In highlights, I'm going to set those same settings to 79, 52, and 30, respectively. And don't mess with the adjustments at all. Just hit OK and you're done! Now what's great about this effect is that it's super customizable. You can go back to pretty much any part that we've added and change it to fit whatever look you're going for. Hope you had fun with this one, and I'll see you next time. Even though working on design projects may be a lot of fun, it's still incredibly time consuming and even challenging. To help you save time while still creating good work, we've got design templates for Photoshop which allow you to finish projects within minutes instead of hours. So if you want to start saving time now, start by checking out our links in the description below.